Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Tableau in two minutes. Today we're going to be covering how to blend data within Tableau. Uh, so I've uh, gone ahead and connected to my fictional furniture sales data set that I uh, cooked up for these data demonstrations. And uh, I've gone ahead and just unioned all of the sales tables together. So September, October, November, December. Um, and you can see the sales that we have in our data source down here. The other pieces that we have uh, in this uh, database, as it were, uh, it's not really a database, it's really an Excel sheet, but close enough, is uh, a table with our regional leaders, our product leaders, and the unit cost. Each of those is an individual table. Now you'll remember if you've seen the data joins in the data source video, uh, that we did actually join all of those together in uh, in this particular data source. So we had a big like tree of tables sitting out here. We're not gonna do that this time. We're gonna use data blending to achieve uh, something that's very similar. So we'll go ahead and hop over to uh, sheet one and you can see that we just have our sales sheets um, in our our sales uh, fields rather in this uh, this data source. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a new data source. We're going to go ahead and reconnect to this Excel file. It's called furniture sales right here. Uh, and then we're going to drag our regional leaders out. And the first one we're going to join is the regional. You can see we have regional and then regional sales director. Um, and then east and west are our two regions. We'll hop back over to our main sheet here. Um, and you can see that now we have two data sources instead of having just one. So why don't we go ahead and drag a region out here. You can see we have uh, region west and we'll just drag sales out um, onto the column here. And what we want to do is we want to add the regional leader to the sheet. Now, the first thing we want to do is go up to here and go edit relationships. Now you'll see that our primary data source, which is the sales table, um, has a relationship set up automatically between the two region fields. So uh, you'll remember we had a region field in our sales table, we have a regional field in our regional leaders table, and both those have automatically been assigned um, a relationship because they have the same name. So when we click on regionals here, you'll see we have this little orange link highlighted. If we were to uncheck that, um, then there will be no relationship between the data sources, and you can see that because the uh, little link has gone gray and it has a line through it. If it's orange and connected, uh, then there is a link. So that means we can use fields from this data source in our visualization. So let's go ahead and drag regional sales director out here next to region, and you'll see that we get region and regional sales director in the same sheet. Now, what happens if we wanted to add some information about our products? Let's go ahead and jump to a new sheet here. We're going to add our product leaders. So again, we're just going to reconnect to this Excel file. There's furniture sales, open it up, drag our product leaders out. And you can see we have a field called product name, which is the product. And then we have the product leader, uh, which is one of our rockstar product leaders here, as I like to call them. Um, let's go back to sheet two. Then we'll go up again. Um, we just want to drag out. So let's go ahead and start with the sales table. We'll drag out uh, product. And then again, just go ahead and drag out sales right here. And then you can see right that we've got our products and we've got our total sales. Now what happens if we want to drag out the product leader as well? Well, if we go up to product leaders, you'll see there's no established relationship here. That's because product name doesn't match any of the fields in here. It's just called product. So to fix that, we're going to go up to edit relationships under the data menu. Uh, instead of leaving this as automatic, you can see there's nothing listed in here. We're going to click custom. We're going to click add a relationship. And then we're going to select product from the primary data source, product name from the secondary data source, and go ahead and create that relationship. Click OK. Now, when we go up and click on our product leaders data source, oh, sorry, yeah, our product leaders data source, you'll see the product name has the little link. Again, we can check and uncheck that depending on whether we want to include or break the link. Uh, and then we can drag product name across next to our Product names are very helpful. Product leader. There we go. And now it's joined up all of the product leaders with the products um, in our main data source. Now, there's one more thing to remember, and that comes when you use continuous fields. So let's go ahead and create again. We're going to create a new data source. This time, we are going to join the unit cost table. So we're going to drag the unit cross. Here we have a product name and a per unit cost. So let's go back to sheet three. Again, because we have product name in one data source and product in another, we're going to have to go up to, we want to use, this is our sales data source. We want to use that as the primary one. And then we want to go to unit cost. You'll see there's no relationship. So you have to go ahead and define a custom one. So product and product name. All right, so let's do this. We're going to drag product out from here. We're going to drag units out from here. And then we're going to drag unit cost out 
from here, per unit cost. Okay, so now we have our table set up. We have the per unit cost, we have the number of units we sold. Now, if we wanted to find out what the total was, we would just want to multiply these together, right? 436 times 60. So we can do that by creating a calculated field. Now, you'll notice I'm creating this calculated field in my unit cost data set. So that means, so this is going to be total cost. So that means that when I create this field, it's going to show up under the unit cost data set. And anything that is a unit cost from this unit cost data set, any fields from here that we use, specifically per unit cost, right, we can use those unaggregated. So I don't have to put these as a sum, min, max, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you'll see here, when I try and add something from the sales data set, right, so in this case, we're going to add units. So when I add this, you'll see it automatically aggregates it for me. And I can't mix aggregate and non-aggregate functions. I also can't take away this sum and have them be row-level calculations, you see, because it'll say all fields must be aggregate or constant when using table calculation functions or fields from multiple data sources. And what that means is that because these are at a different detail level, they don't have a one-to-one -one relationship uh, in the data source. And when blending, we have to summarize both data sources and we can only combine them in calculations at the summary level. So we couldn't have, uh, for example, a unit cost, right, where we just looked at the number of units per thing and then we, we subtracted them out line by line in our data source. We have to aggregate them first and then do the calculation aggregate level. But it does work, so we've got total cost now. We can drag that out. You'll see that we have total cost out here, which is just the units times the per unit calculation, and we did those by summing them both up. And this, you'll see, is ag, so it's an aggregate calculation. You'll also see that the two calculations that we have from our secondary data source, the unit cost data source, have this little check mark next to them indicating that they're from a secondary data source. So that is a good way to tell uh, whether you have things uh, set up the right way around. Uh, depending on how you do this, you may want to organize it so that all of your calculations are done under one particular data source. Sometimes I like to make sure that everything's done under the primary data source, but uh, sometimes that's not always practical. So this is a good way to uh, to fix that. All right, uh, that about wraps it up for this episode of uh, Tableau in two minutes on data blending. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. You can download the data and the Tableau workbook from the video description. If you like what you hear and you'd like more Tableau tips and tricks, then please subscribe to our channel and we will see you next time.